Hey everyone, in this video I'll be showing you how to create a low poly effect in Adobe Photoshop. These are two examples that I have made, and in this video I'll be showing you how I did the Stormtrooper, and I will also explain the process in detail. There are two things you should know before you start. The effect has to be applied manually, because Photoshop does not have a filter or anything that will apply this effect. It is a fairly simple concept, but it is also very time consuming. Even though it looks simple, it can take up to an hour to achieve this effect, or maybe if you're working on a more advanced project, it can take even longer. But now, let's get started. Step 1. Pick a reference photo, preferably symmetrical. So the reason why you should pick a symmetrical photo is because it'll greatly reduce the amount of time it'll take to complete the piece, because you only have to do one half, which you then can copy and just flip to the other side. When you've found a nice and symmetrical photo, create a copy and hide the original. You should have the original in case something goes wrong later on. Step 2. Set up a grid. The reason why we'll set up a grid is because we'll be drawing triangles later, and it'll be much easier to do so if there's a grid that can guide us. You can modify the settings of the grid by going to the Photoshop Preferences. I'll make each square 2 by 2 centimeters. You also want to make sure that you enable snapping, and you can do so by going to View, Snap, and make sure that the grid has a check mark. This will snap the mouse to the grid, which will make it a lot easier to make the triangles more even. Now you can just delete the right half using the Rectangular Marquee tool. Make sure that the cut is in the middle of the photo. Step 3. Make an outline. Use the grid to create a rough outline around your object. You don't have to be too picky, just try to draw a general outline. I am using the line tool and a red color to do this. It doesn't matter what color you use, but just make sure that it pops out. This should be done on separate layers, not the same layer as the photo. Make sure that the corners of the outline are positioned on points in which the grid intersects. The grid becomes pretty useless if you don't use it as a guide, so Make sure that you click close to the grid so that the mouse snaps to it. This will make it easier to connect the lines so that you don't get any empty spaces between them. Step 4. Outline the triangles. This is the most time consuming part. It's not mandatory, but it'll make it a lot easier for you to fill the triangles with color if you outline them first. This also must be done on separate layers, not the same one as the photo. We'll use the same technique as we did when we made the outline. Use the line tool and make sure that you snap the corners of the triangles to an intersection on the grid. There are two different ways to approach this. You can either have a large amount of triangles or you can focus on shaping the triangles in such a way that they will wrap around the object. In that case, you don't need as many triangles. And I would definitely prefer the second option. In order to make that easier for you, Try to outline some of the important parts of the photo or parts with high contrast before you draw the triangles. You can see that I'm doing this around the eye, for example. After that, you can start creating the triangles. Remember, always make sure that you snap the mouse to the grid before you click in order to get nice and even triangles. When you're done, merge all the lines into a single group or layer. Step 5. Fill the triangles with color. Before you do this, you have to make sure that the color of the background matches the color of the object that you're portraying. You do not want to have a transparent background. Since I'm doing a Stormtrooper helmet, which is mainly white, I want the background color to also be white. If this is not the case with your photo, you can simply delete its current background and fill it with the matching color. If the background color does not match, the color of the object, the triangles close to the outline will not look good since the color of the background will sort of merge into the triangles. To fill a triangle with color, have the reference photo selected and use the polygonal marquee tool to select a triangle. This should be pretty easy since we already have outlined these triangles. Once you have it selected, go to Filter, Blur, and Average. This will flatten the triangle into a single color. This must be done with all triangles, and in order to speed up the process, use Command F or Control F if you're on Windows. That will apply the last filter you used to the selected area. You can also use Command D or Control D to deselect a triangle when you're done with it. 
Again, do this with all the triangles. If there's a large area with a similar color, it can be hard to see if you have applied the effect or not, since the triangles will sort of blend into the background. If that is the case, there's no harm in filling a triangle with color twice, so if you're not sure, you should fill it. Step 6. Separate the image from the background. With the reference photo still selected, use the grid and the outline to make a selection around the object with the polygonal marquee tool. Then, press Command J or Control J. This will copy the selected area into a new layer. Then, you can just delete the other one. Also, you no longer need the lines, so you can now either hide them or delete them as well. You can also hide the grid by going to View, Show, and Grid. Step 7. Duplicate the image and flip the copy horizontally. Since we used a symmetric image, this is very easy to do. Just right-click on the layer and duplicate it. Then, with the copy selected, go to Edit, Transform, and Flip horizontally. Then you can just move it into place. If you notice the thin line between the two halves, you can simply delete it with the rectangular marquee tool and try again. Step 8. Add your own modifications. I would suggest adding some sort of gradient overlay and or filter to make it more interesting. You can also change the background to whatever you want, it's completely up to you. So now you have made a low poly image. It is time consuming I know, but you can learn a lot from it. One of the most important things about this project is that you can learn how to analyze the shape of an object, which can be useful if you do photo manipulations, painting, 3D modeling, or pretty much anything. Anyways, I hope you found this tutorial helpful and interesting, thanks for watching.